Let's set the stage for our experiments with layout. First, I remove all the text elements. Okay, and also very corresponding styles. Okay, we don't need this and this. I will change the styling of our container to see its boundaries. So first I will remove this padding top and set the overall merging to 20 and merging top to 30. I will also change the background from white to something that is noticeable. So for instance, let's make it linen. Now let's modify the styling for our square component. I will make it a bit smaller so that several squares can be displayed. I also remove background color definition from the style and put it in line so that we can easily display several squares with different colors. Okay, looks good, but for now let's comment it out and let's talk about sizes of components. There are several properties that let you control the size and position of your component. So let's start again with a basic square component. Now I configure its style. So let's set background color to pink and height to 200, width 200. Width and height determine component dimensions. Background color is responsible for the component being pink. Now let's examine some more properties. We can configure border of this component. So I set border width to 20 and let's make the color of the boulder maroon. So boulder color is maroon. We can even set different border width on each side of the view. So for instance, now I will set border right width to zero. So it removes the border at this side of our pink square and border bottom width will be 10. So we can see the thinner line here and I will also make it different color. So border bottom color, let's say that it will be red. Note that the border width is included in the component width and height. Padding defines the space between children of our component and its borders. By default, child component may take the whole available space, but we can control it with padding. So let's put another view component inside this pink square. So I need to put it inside and define some style for it to make it visible. I set flex to one to make this component expand whole available space. And I set background color to orange so that we can distinguish between orange and pink background. You can see that there is no pink space visible. The orange view takes all the space. But when I set padding to 50, you can see that there is space created between the borders and the only child of the pink square. You can also set different padding across one axis or against specific edges. So for instance, let's make horizontal padding a bit thinner. Okay, you can see it here and here. So horizontal refers to left and right. And we can also change padding at one side, for instance, padding bottom, and let's make it really thin, like five. 
Next property is merging. So merging defines a space around the component and moves component relative to it accordingly. So this is where our red square component will be useful. But I also need to align the components horizontally. So flex direction is row. Now, when I set merging left of this pink square, everything will be shifted. Merging left and let's make it 20. So merging created some additional space at the left side of our pink square and moved everything to the right. It is also possible to offset where the component is displayed without really moving the space it takes. And you can do it with properties like left, right, top and bottom. So let's see what happens when I change margin left to just left. You can see that the square moved by 20 pixels. So the change was just the same like for margin left, but the red square remain in the original position. This is because the space taken by the pink square remained unchanged, although the place where it is displayed is offset.